let us pray. Lord, we do love you. And we do lift our praise before you, almighty God. For you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like it, namely this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, Please be seated now for our first reading. Testament reading is from the prophet Isaiah. Enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Hold not back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your descendants will possess the nations and will people the desolate cities. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Revelation of John. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, Yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of the heaven from my God. And I will also write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The word of the Lord. Quiet down the voices in our heart now. Lord, send down your Holy Spirit. Open your word to our hearts and our hearts to your word. That today that we may see the glory of you in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I know that you will be welcome later on, so may I just step one forward to join Archbishop Kalini and the whole leadership of AMIA and the Winter Conference Organizing Committee, both nationally and locally, to welcome you all to the Anglican Mission in America's 
Winter Conference 2006 in Jacksonville, Florida, USA. <coughs> This is the biggest winter conference so far in the whole short history of AMIA. <laughs> and we praise and thank God for the magnificent effort and labor of love many of our faithful and devoted people have put in to give us such a grand, beautiful, and conducive venue for this conference. I know that God will bless their hard work by using this conference to bless many churches and people who come to this conference. Now, this is the sixth winter conference. I and my wife have the joy and privilege to attend. Our experience with Winter Conference in the last six years has been extraordinary. For the last six years, God has graciously used the Winter Conference to breathe into my spirit the deepening conviction and a fuller understanding that he is doing a new and great thing with AMIA, because this is a community of faith called out by God and birthed by him for his own purpose at this crucial and critical moment in his church in North America and in the Anglican Communion. Please note the heading of your brochure the Anglican Mission in America's Winter's Conference. Now this, of course, mark a new reality in the growth and the development of AMIA. AMIA has now grown to include the Anglican Mission in America, the Anglican Coalition in Canada, and the Anglican Coalition in America. It was wonderful, encouraging, and reviving to see with my own eyes and to the experience deeply in my own heart the reality of the Spirit of God touching many lives, many wonderful lives, and gathered them each year and of course, many have paid a price for their faith and have come of an, out of an adverse and painful situation. But when they came, when they come, they just come to focus on God, to honor and glorify God, and to give him authority, power, and dominion that are rightfully his. Each year, God has never failed to descend upon the Winter Conference. And every year, the collections of God's faithful people was turned or transformed into a beautiful, inspiring, uniting, and powerful encounter. Encounter between his children and the Father an encounter between brothers and sisters together for the mission of God. Tonight, as we begin the Winter Conference 2007, I am certain that our Father in Heaven continue to long for the same focus and devotion from His own children gathering here. I heard is more than 1,600 people. Give God a clap. <clears throat> I praise God with great joy and excitement 
for this very special gathering of so many of our spiritual leaders from the international scenes and also from the native soils of America and Canada. I know many of us have labored hard and full in the past years. We have all come with our own very urgent, important and legitimate interests and agendas. But this winter conference tonight is God's own invitation for us to worship Him and Him alone. So let us put aside <clears throat> let us put aside ourselves and our own interests and agendas. Let us focus on God and lock into the leading of his empower, empowering spirits. Let us humble ourselves and surrender ourselves to the Holy Spirit for him to open our heart, our minds, our spirit, and our whole being so that we can see Jesus in his glory, so that we can catch his vision for each one of us and for the churches he has entrusted to us. And together, brothers and sisters, we can clearly receive the marching order for God's mission in Americas. As a specially favored community of faith in God's own hearts, he invites us, as he invited John into his throne room, to join the whole heavenly host to sing with great joy and enthusiasm the everlasting hymns of praise and worship to the Lamb who sits on the throne. Yes, Revelation chapter 4, verse 8 and verse 11. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. You are worthy we all will say, our Lord and our God, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their beings. Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. You are worthy to take the scroll and open the seal, because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchase men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. <clears throat> Now, in my preparation for this opening address, I tell you, I was trembling and fearful. I pray very hard to the Lord. I almost bargained with him. <coughs> I said to him, Lord, this is an extraordinary time for your people who are called by you to gather here tonight to celebrate the wonder of your grace and favor in the Anglican mission in Americas. May I humbly ask that you give me your own message to bring to this opening service. Please, please God, give me one strong word to reveal what is deep in your own hearts. 